We dive into a post-2022 free agency mock draft Monday for the Baltimore Ravens next year on Locked On Ravens. You are Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we've returned here with another episode of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I am your host, Kevin Ostriker of Ravens Wire. Thank you for making Locked On Ravens your first listen today. We're here on the Locked On Podcast Network, of course, and we're free and available on all platforms. Today's episode also was brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is covered this season with more props, odds, and lies than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And we are back here another week of Baltimore Ravens talk entering week two of 2022 free agency. But since it is Monday here today, you know what that means. It is another mock draft Monday. We're back here. No more virtual background here on Lockdown Ravens. I can touch that wall behind me. It is a real wall. We had tons of great content last week breaking down the Ravens free agency moves, such as Marcus Williams, Morgan Moses, Michael Pierce, Sedarius Smith twice. Cause yeah, that whole thing was something, but a lot of great content there. If you want to check out our analysis on all of that, but here today we have, Great analysis. Starting off with, I still want to talk about my free agency thoughts. The Ravens didn't do a ton over the weekend in free agency. In fact, they didn't really sign anyone. It was more a couple players leaving. But I want to give my thoughts on just where this team is right now, where I think this team is, and and some next steps for them. Because I know some people are starting to get a a little antsy. So I want to to give my thoughts on that. In the second segment, we'll continue with our Mock Draft Monday content. As scheduled, we'll talk about the Mock Draft that I did for Mock Draft Sunday here today in that second segment. In the final segment, we'll get to your Mock Drafts that you submitted on Twitter. And again, a huge outpouring of Twitter Mock Drafts, and all of them look great. I probably will not be able to get to all of them here today. In fact, I know I will not be able to get to all of them here today. I'll try to get to as many as I can throughout the week. But I look at all of them. They all looked great. And again, thank you for that. So let's dive into this content here. Before we do that, though, I do want to give a quick shout out, a birthday shout out to my dad, whose birthday is today. And he's actually been a special guest on this show twice. And they are the favorite episodes of mine. They're my most favorite episodes and they hold a special place in my heart. I I love all the episodes I do, but those are just a little bit, a little bit more special. It didn't work out this year because the holiday schedule was all kind of crazy and everything, but those episodes were great. And, you know, he's somebody who has shaped me into the person I am today and has also really helped and over the course of my childhood helped raise me and, and figure out my love for the Ravens. So he, he's done a lot to influence me in multiple aspects. And so dad, happy birthday. I love you. But let's dive into our Ravens content today. Before we do that, be sure to follow us on Twitter, me at chaos 34, the locked on Ravens account at locked on Ravens. If you're with us on YouTube, in video form, you like the content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We hit 1,000 subscribers a couple days ago. It was my first goal. Let's go for 2K. Second goal, 2,000 subscribers. If you like the content, you enjoy the Baltimore Ravens talk five days a week, be sure to subscribe, like this video. If you're in audio form, thank you as well. Same thing, follow the show, turn notifications on, whether it's on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, we are there waiting. So let's dive into free agency now for the Ravens, what happened over the weekend, or I guess storyline of what didn't happen over the weekend for the Ravens is there there hasn't been a lot of activity, not a lot of rumors surrounding the Ravens in terms of who they might be interested in, who they might sign. And that has caused some people to become a bit uneasy. And I understand. And it wouldn't have been as big of an issue. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it an issue, but as big of a storyline is it is this off season because the AFC this off season has been in, in, insane. I don't, off, off the rocker. I don't know. It isn't a pure arms race in the AFC. All the AFC teams are going out there acquiring stars, giving up big assets. The AFC North looks like it's going to be uber, uber competitive this year. The AFC West looks like the most talented division in football. You have other teams going out there making all these splash signings. And for the Ravens, they, they are included in that bunch, but they haven't gone out there and traded three first round picks for a quarterback like the Cleveland Browns did. And I mean, look for that on the field. Great move off the field, pretty horrible move, but there there's those types of moves where, you know, those teams are going all in and in some instances selling their soul to do it. But regardless, 
the Chargers, you know, signing J.C. Jackson, trading for Khalil Mack, Sebastian Joseph Day, they're doing all that. The Broncos trading for Russell Wilson, the Bengals getting some offensive line reinforcements, the Steelers making some solid moves, the Raiders getting Devontae Adams. The, again, the whole AFC West has gone, has gone crazy. The Jaguars spending over $100 million. The Ravens have done their share. They signed Marcus Williams to a five-year, $70 million deal. He's one of the best up-and-coming safeties in this league. Fills a huge need for them. Gives them that true bull hawk. Morgan Moses, a steal of a deal. Three for $15 million. Michael Pierce comes in, a three for $16.5 million deal to shore up that run defense. Give the Ravens a tad of interior pressure as well. But people look at what the other teams are doing. And I think what happened to Baltimore was Sedaria Smith. And I think that whole situation leaves a sour taste or has left a sour taste in many people's mouths. Where... It, it was all looking amazing, right? All looking dandy and everything's great. And the Ravens are getting Marcus Williams and, and Darius Smith to come in and shore up that defense. And the Ravens needed some pure edge rushers or, you know, solid, really good top tier edge rushers and guys who can get to the quarterback. Darius Smith gives them that when he's healthy. But then the whole thing comes out about Chandler Jones and Von Miller and the contracts they got. And Darius Smith might have said, hold on, wait a minute. Hold on one second. I want to get that kind of money. And the Ravens, a lot of people had already been talking about, oh, this is such a steal for the Ravens. And so he backs out. And all of a sudden, the Ravens go back to the drawing board. They need to find an edge rusher. There aren't a ton left. Jadavian Clowney is probably the best one that's available. He's rumored to potentially be going back to Cleveland. No confirmations on that right now. But that, that seems to be the most popular rumor out there in terms of him. They could bring back Justin Houston. They could bring in Derek Barnett as an edge defensive end type hybrid guy. But there's not a Zadarius Smith out there anymore. And I think that combined with all these teams making these huge moves, the Ravens are getting better. The issue is that people feel like other teams are getting loads and loads and loads better. And I mean, yes, that, that is accurate. I think that the Ravens have to do more this off season. And I think the Ravens know they have to do more this off season, but we've seen them slow play things before they got uber aggressive early on. Most of it worked out. Some of it didn't. I wouldn't say it necessarily backfired, but it definitely stung to, ne to not get a guy like Zedaria Smith. Over the weekend, Bradley Bozeman signs with the Carolina Panthers. The details of that contract came out last night by Aaron Wilson. One year, the around $2.8 million range. It's a very cheap deal for Bozeman. I think it's around a little over $1 million base salary. Has some incentives in there as well. This, this is an example of a player betting on his market and it not working out. The Ravens offered Bozeman an extension around December and he turned it down. He thought he could get more. He thought that there was a better market out there for him. And that was just, it was not the case. The center market throughout the off season was not amazing. So Bozeman ends up having to settle and look, I think he's going to vastly outperform that and get a nice payday during the 2023 off season, depending on which team wants to pay him. But People are people are asking why why couldn't the Ravens match that? They lost they just lost their starting center. They now have to restart the position again after not having stability there, really since Ryan Jensen left. And it, it, it can be a bit frustrating because people look at that and they say the Ravens could have matched that. The Ravens could have done that. Well, Jets Rebrick at the Athletic has kind of been alluding to and kind of speculates a little bit that uh, the Ravens might have just. Off of that extension to Bozeman, he declined it. And the Ravens just might have said, all right, that we're, we're done. We're moving on. We're, we're not going to pursue this anymore regardless. And so there wasn't really any interest on their side. That's that's what the rumor mill is saying out there right now. So if that is the case, I don't know. People have classified it as stubborn. Other people have just said that's the cost of doing business sometimes. And the Ravens, J.C. Tread are still out there. There are still quality free agents available that the Ravens can sign. I talked about some of those edge guys. J.C. Treader is a better player than Bozeman. You know, he, he is a better player. And I think would shore up that offensive line, him and Kevin Zeitler have experience playing together in Cleveland. And I think that it would be really great for the Ravens to have a duo like that on the right interior where that would be great. And they could kind of replicate what Bozeman and Zeitler had, but with a better center. So I think that'd be good for him. That Bobby Wagner, I've been on the Bobby Wagner train for a while. I think he'd shore up the interior of the Ravens front seven and would give them a veteran leader to play next to Patrick Queen. Chris Harris, A.J. Bouye, some corners out there still who could potentially sign Stephon Gilmore. I don't see that as a fit uh, necessarily. Maybe the Ravens do, but I don't know. Maybe the Ravens are looking at a trade. There could be some edge rushers available. I know Daniel Hunter was a popular name. I know the roster bonus thing kind of has that, that complicated, but they have options, but I do think they need to do more. They have to re-sign some of their guys. I think the most likely candidates for that right now are Clayus Campbell and Patrick Ricard. 
But I think what they have done is a great start. It is a building block to what they potentially could do. But with the way that the free agency period has gone for the AFC in particular, there are going to be probably 10 or 11 teams in the AFC seriously competing for playoffs. You can even tick that up to 12 or 13 if you really want to get spicy with it. I think the Ravens have to do a little bit more. I think the Ravens know they have to do it. The Ravens are a smart franchise. They understand what to do. But at the same time, they can't get back into their, I think, compensatory pick ways. And this isn't me saying that, oh, they have to overspend and they have to give up all their draft capital and spend every single dollar. But they can restructure some guys. They can make some cap space. They can add splash additions. I think they need at least one more borderline splash addition plus a couple other solid guys here to round out that depth, prepare for the draft, and hit on those draft picks, and there you go. That's a perfect offseason. And then all of a sudden, you're up there with the best again. I don't think that the Ravens, you know, the roster is bad right now. It's a really good roster. The issue is that some of these teams have made juggernauts, and while the Ravens can certainly beat those juggernauts as underdogs and they like playing as the underdogs, you want to get as much talent on that roster as possible. The Ravens, they're doing their due diligence, it feels like, and, and I'm excited to see what they do in these next couple of days, maybe these next couple of weeks as we – get more into more of the dead, the dead days of free agency. We're not, not as many people are signing per day. We had that free agency bonanza and now we're kind of looking towards the slowing down of the free agency market. So Baltimore has been off to a good start this off season. Zadaria Smith thing was a little disheartening, but if they can make a couple other signings here, they will be right up back in the winners here of the 2021 free agency period up along some of those teams that have made those big, big splashes, but they have to make that, make those commitments. I think that's really, really key for them. We'll head into our first break, though, when we get back, we'll be diving into my mock draft that I did here for today's show. So stay tuned for that. We still have a lot to talk about here on Locked on Ravens. But first, I want to tell you a bit about Bill Bar. And this time of year, people have pretty much given up on their New Year's resolutions. But don't do that this year. And if yours is to eat healthy, do it with Bill Bar because they – have amazing, tasty bars that it really doesn't feel like a resolution because you're eating delicious food. They also have Built Bar Puffs, which are the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, super marshmallowy. They're really, really cool, actually. And they're covered in 100% real chocolate, just like all Built Bars are. Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. They have amazing flavors, too. Mint brownies, my favorite. They also have coconut, coconut, almond, and they even have a white chocolate cookies and cream. So go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCK15. Get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. We're back here. Our second segment of Locked On Ravens. Kevin Allstriker, your host, still here with you. Let's dive into the Mock Draft Monday portion of the Mock Draft Monday. <laughs> That's pretty cool, right? I did a Mock Draft Monday or a Mock Draft that I put out for Mock Draft Sunday. And I like this one a lot. This one's one of my favorites that I've done. I think it hits on a lot of key needs. And as I've said before, the free agency period is going to give us an idea of what areas the Ravens need to put a, a lot of draft capital into. And we've seen that where the Ravens, they – Sign a safety, sign an offensive tackle, sign a defensive tackle. So what's left for them, edge rusher, cornerback, center, offensive tackle depth, inside linebacker. So a bunch of those needs. We'll, we'll start off here with my pick number 14. Trevon Walker fell, fell to me. Trayvon Walker fell to me at number 14, 6'5", 270 pounds edge rusher. Now, there is some debate about where Walker is better suited to line up whether it is purely as an edge, whether it's a defensive end, edge hybrid, but he's a defensive lineman that does a ton and is very versatile. And this mock draft for me today, the key word is versatile. I picked a lot of versatile players. He has the size. He has the speed. He has a great, great length. I think that really helps him a ton. And when you pair all those together, you have somebody who I think is worthy of a top 10, top 15 pick. He wins easily. He's able to get through gaps easily. And also, he sets the edge well, and I think that's also key here because for Baltimore, they like to have guys who can do it in the pass game, get to the quarterback, but also make sure they are quality defenders in the run game and they can do their part there. He also was able to really use his power to his advantage to knock back offensive tackles and kind of stun them at the line with his first move there, and his upside is, is tremendous, and I think – the fact that he can give the Ravens something this year while also having enough upside and that potential to be a star at the next level gives them, I think, a lot to work with if Walker were to fall to them. Now, do I think Walker falls? No. I think a team like Atlanta, 
maybe Seattle, if they don't go quarterback or something, the, the Giants potentially, they could go out there and sign and sign and draft a guy like Trayvon Walker. But I think, look, I'm going to give what the mock draft simulator gives me. Trayvon Walker fell to me. I took Trayvon Walker there, and it fits a need for the Ravens that do need some some star power at the S position now with Sedarius Smith. No longer signing with the Ravens. Pick 45 here again. Talked about cornerback, how that's now a need for them, that they haven't signed anybody yet. Roger McCreary was my pick, the corner out of Auburn at 45, the 5'11", 190-pound corner. Now, he can do a lot of different things. And again, versatility was the key. He can play both inside and outside. The Ravens obviously looking for their next slot cornerback since Tavon Young is no longer a part of this team. But he can do some stuff on the outside as well. Good tackler. Good tackler in the run game. It wraps up very well. The Ravens 2021 was not their best tackling season, to put it nicely. So having a guy like McGree who can do that is really great. And in coverage, he does a really good job of sticking with his guy. He's a very sticky cornerback, doesn't really get lost a ton. He's able to mirror, mirror guys really well. He also wants the ball. He wants the ball in his hands. He makes plays on the ball. You know, people have classified him as a ball hungry corner, which you talk about Marcus Peters. You love that. He's a competitive guy in coverage and also is able to do a lot of good things with his speed. He uses his speed to his advantage well. He's able to run with guys, and that's important, especially in this day and age where guys are just sending guys down the field. Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters, they, they're not slow corners, but I think having a guy like McCurry who can use his speed to his advantage is very good. He also has good instincts, good feel for the game, high football IQ, so he's a player that I think in the second round of 45 – would most definitely be worthy of that pick. Next to pick number 76, I took a, an offensive lineman in Jamari Salier, who is 6'4", 325, and is, again, versatile. <laughs> it's the word of the day. It's versatile. He can do a lot. You, you can play him at guard. He can move out to tackle if you want for some offensive tackle depth. He also got some center reps a little bit during this draft process, so he can do it all. Kind of reminds me a bit of Pasha McCary, but – he is a nasty, nasty football player. Does a lot in the run game well. He comes off the ball hard. He hits. He's a heavy hitter. And I think the Ravens, they love those guys who shock defensive linemen. He can get to the second level. He can redirect you, clear out running lanes, is able to have a good anchor, and also is very aware. Again, instincts we talked about with McCreary. Sailor has those same things. And, you know, it's, it's another thing where Baltimore will have to figure out where he's best suited. Like, is he best on the right side at right tackle is a uh, kind of understudied to Morgan Moses. Can he play left tackle? If Ronnie Stanley isn't healthy enough to play, can he play at guard? Maybe a left guard situation. Is he the best option at center? So he's versatile, but I think at the end of the day, that's a good problem for the Ravens to have where you can have a guy to play multiple positions and you're kind of figuring out where he's best at and he can do it at a high level. If he can do multiple things at a high level, I'm all for that. And so say there was my pick there at 76 100, I went inside linebacker and picked Troy Anderson, the linebacker from Montana State. 6'4 guy, uber athlete. And you want to talk about versatile, let's talk about Troy Anderson. Troy Anderson is arguably the most versatile player in this entire draft. <laughs> Literally the most versatile player. He did a lot of good things in Montana State, not just as an inside linebacker. This stuff is a quarterback, a running back, and a linebacker. So you, you can draw some offensive packages. Imagine you get... Troy Anderson on the field with Lamar Jackson and Devin DuVernay and, and all these all these guys who can make stuff happen. I think that'd be really fun to watch. But he, he is a bit raw. He, he does need to learn the position a bit more. But he has the athleticism. He has sideline to sideline range, which we see with Patrick Queen. And I think adding another player with that does not hurt. Sometimes can be a bit late processing. Again, still has, still has to learn a bit of the position. But I think for the upside that he has, if the Ravens bring in a veteran, like if it is Wagner, if it is Josh Bynes, a lesser type one-year deal for a veteran like a Bynes, I think that having a guy like Anderson who can learn, that'd be great. You know, you, you can bring him in and he could be an impact starter for the Ravens in even 2023 and even give them impact snaps in 2022. So I think that's where I'm looking at pick 100, 110, Cole Strange. I picked Cole Strange in one of my other mock drafts that I've done here. And I, and I always try to, to differentiate a little bit. I, I don't tend to draft the same players over and over and over again because, you know, if we do a mock draft one week, then the next week I go, oh, hey, here's here are the same 10 prospects. That's no fun. So I, I picked Strange here because I thought it was fit with the draft. And I know Salier can do a lot of things. 
with his play and where he fits. But Cole Strange, it seems like most like him at center at the next level, and that's ideally where he would play. And I think he could start week one for the Ravens at center, and that would push Pastor McCarry back into that super sixth offensive lineman role that I love for him. I think that's where he's best at. Strange is someone who is also a nasty football player. He is a guy who has played in a lot of different positions. Again, left guard, left tackle, center. He's amazing at being able to drive and very aggressive in that power that he uses. He uses it to his advantage. The nasty demeanor I've talked about, he is a people mover as well, can clear out running lanes and also has a good anchor. And so that's a player that if you pair that on the interior and the Ravens don't sign a J.C. Treader, I think Strange would be a great pick for them. It, it's been reported that the Ravens spent some some time with Strange, and it, it wouldn't shock me if the Ravens ended up picking him. So that's my pick at 110. At 119, I took another player who I had taken before in Justin Ross, the wide receiver from Clemson. I don't Justin Ross, I don't think, lasts anywhere near this. But again, the mock draft simulator gives it to me. I will take it. Justin Ross is my favorite receiver in this draft class for the Ravens that makes sense from a need and round perspective in my opinion you could you could make an argument that oh yeah chris olave is a better receiver than justin ross like okay yeah sure <laughs> like definitely but i still think that injuries we don't know what justin ross can be and i think justin ross fits the profile of what the ravens need is a 6'3 205 pound receiver great at the contested catch point has some deceptive speed but again it's, it's been the injury history and for a team that doesn't necessarily need a wide receiver but would really benefit from having a big body who can do some stuff that is no offense, not miles Boykin. I think it would benefit them tremendously there. So I like Justin Ross a lot. There are other receivers who fit that profile. I'll take those guys in the upcoming weeks here, but uh, Justin Ross is, is my favorite receiver. I could, I couldn't pass on him again. 128. I took Ty Chandler, the running back from North Carolina. Now Chandler's 5'11". He's 203 pounds would fill in as a number three down or number three back for the Ravens can play on some third downs good in the pass game good in pass protection and ideally has the ability to do some dual threat things for the Ravens while J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards if one of them isn't feeling right or it takes a little bit longer for them to feel like them their their true selves I think that if you have a guy like Chandler on the roster he can do a lot of good things early on in this offense that will I think get be getting back to some of their power running and and being able to dominate on the ground while also having the pass game complementing it. I think that'd be great. Chandler is somebody who end, ended up having 92 rushing touchdowns in his college career, and more than 6,000 rushing yards of production is there. And I think for the Ravens, they don't necessarily need somebody who's going to come in and take 25 carries a game. They need a compliment, and I think that Chandler does do that. Next, at 139, I took, I took Kobe Bryant, the corner from Cincinnati, 6'2 corner, 185. He's he's versatile as well, played cornerback and safety, and he's able to use his athleticism to an advantage. He's, he's a twitchy athlete and is one of the better ball tracking corners slash defensive backs in this draft. He's around the ball a lot, and also – the issues with him, the tackling could use some improvement. He 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 dives at ankles instead of wraps up, and so that's someone that that, that could really use some improvements on his tackling. But look, in in coverage, he's solid. The Ravens can teach up the tackling because they 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 did it at the end of the year last year where they got better at tackling, so they could teach up Kobe Bryant. I, I like the the Kobe Bryant pick at one thirty nine, one forty one. I took Isaiah Thomas. The edge from Oklahoma, a bit of a raw player, and also could be a versatile piece, defensive end slash edge. He is very, very consistent at winning. He wins off of effort, but sometimes he has to be able to do a different, a bunch of different things with his athleticism, which I think he has to use a little bit better. But at the same time, he's a developmental prospect, and I think at 141, he can do a lot worse than a, development, a developmental edge, which the Ravens do need at this point because was the area Smith not coming to Baltimore, they they have some holes there and they could use some developmental guys to go along with a guy like Dalen Hayes, for example. And finally, 196, I took Cole Turner, the tight end out of Nevada. Now, Turner is huge. He's 6'6", 240 pounds. He's able to get lined up out wide, lined out in the slot. He does a lot of good things. Like He's a good athlete. He's, he's not the speediest guy in the world, but I think for the Ravens, they need somebody who can – do well in the past game, be a weapon for Lamar Jackson and be able to block. And for Turner, 
he can do that as well. And the Ravens, the tight end need is not one where they have they have to necessarily get invest in it in the second round or the third round if there's not a guy they like. This is a deep enough tight end class where they can get guys at 196 like Cole Turner who make an impact. So I like that pick for me at 196. My final pick, which is Cole Turner. So a lot of versatility in that mock draft. I liked it a lot. I think it hits on a lot of knees. No interior defensive lineman for me in that draft. I kind of I debated going back and forth, but I said, you know, for this week with Michael Pierce coming in, I'll, I'll kind of ignore it for now because some of the guys that I talked about that I drafted like Trayvon Walker have the ability to play some, some defensive line. And even if Clays Campbell comes back, that would help. Also, we'll head into our final break here now, though. Let me get back on Locked On Ravens. We'll dive into your mock drafts from Twitter. So be sure to stay tuned for that as we have a ton to talk about on Locked On Ravens. But first, let's talk a bit about that online and the college basketball tournament. It is here. March Madness in full swing. My bracket is looking kind of busted. Uh, Long story short, I picked Illinois (laughs) to go to the finals. And, yeah, it didn't work out too well for me. Uh, So, yeah, let's leave it at that. But, even for the NBA, the Nuggets are on a, on a on a rough stretch right now. And so if you want to bet on the Nuggets or bet on anything else relating to the NBA or college basketball, betonline.net is your number one sports for all your sports betting needs and info. It's the best spot for your sports scores, podcasts, and news. And also it's not just basketball. There's hockey, UFC, live betting, and your favorite Vegas you know, game. So head to the website today. Or use a mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. We're back. Our final segment of Locked On Ravens, Kevin Allstriker, your host, still here with you again. Thank you for making Locked On Ravens your first listen every day. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want more daily Baltimore Ravens content Monday through Friday. Make your second listen Locked On NFL Draft, though. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football and prospects and the NFL front offices as well as free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And let's now dive into some Twitter mock drafts that we got a lot of. And I'm glad we had a lot of them. Again, I'm going to go just in the order I see them that pop up on my comment section. So uh, I apologize if I don't get to yours here today. I'll do my best to get to them throughout the rest of the week. I'll start off here with a mock draft from Jesse Ballasis, who has the Ravens taking Sauce Gardner, cornerback from Cincinnati at number 14. Drake Jackson, edge, 45 out of USC. Josh Pascal, the edge from Kentucky at 76. Channing Tindall, the linebacker from Georgia at 100. Cole Strange. Chattanooga, 110, interior offensive lineman. Luke Odecki, offensive tackle, 119. Neil Farrell Jr., defensive lineman from LSU at 128. Zion McCollum, corner from Sam Houston at 139. Jeremy Ruckert, tight end, Ohio State, 141. And Andrew Stuber, offensive tackle at 196. I love Sauce Gardner. I love this pick. I don't think he's going to be available, but hey, if the mock draft simulator gives it to you, you take it. So I, I love the pick of Sauce Gardner. Pairing him with two edge guys, then back to back at 45 and 76. I mean, look, it's it's needs. The Ravens have the needs right now, and and Jesse does a good job here of drafting for need. The Ravens need a cornerback; they get a star. The Ravens need some edge depth; they draft two back to back inside linebacker. They haven't really signed anybody yet, so they draft one in the, in the third round there at the end with that compensatory pick. And then you have the offensive lineman. Jesse has three offensive linemen. I think that's again the sweet spot. If the Ravens sign one more offensive lineman. I think then I'll I'll drop that number down to two. But right now, I still think three could be a realistic number. I'm in between two and three right now for how many linemen they will take. Then defensive line with Neil Farrell Jr., you get another corner. It's good that two corners were taken here. I agree with that. The tight end, yeah, this is this is a great draft. I like the prospects taken. I think it's a great needs-based draft where the Ravens round out their roster in, in a really, really big way. So good draft here from Jesse. Next, let's look at a mock draft from Eric Clark who has the Ravens taking Perrion Winfrey in a trade down. The Ravens apparently trade down here to 25 and take Perrion Winfrey, the interior defensive lineman. 45, Onut Ebikiti, the edge from Penn State there at 45. 76, Troy Anderson, linebacker, 89, Cam Taylor, Britt Corner, 104, Nick Cross, safety. 110, Alec Pierce, wide receiver, 115, Matt Letzko, offensive tackle, 128, Chica Conquo, tight end, 141, Cam Jurgens, dear offensive lineman, 145, John Bridgeway, interior defensive lineman, 168, Jack Jones, corner, 196, Tyler Ligier, running back, and 253, Christopher Allen, edge. Ooh, so this, is, this is a lot of picks. How many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 selections for Eric here. I think that's probably a little bit too many well i i don't let, let me not say that right now because we don't know if the ravens are how many guys in free the ravens are going to sign they might need a lot of those picks but i could see them packaging two or three of these picks to move up into a round 
where they feel like they can draft a guy. But in terms of actual players, Perrion Winfrey is a very underrated defensive lineman, in my opinion, has back of the first round potential. People see him in the second round. I, I think he's a back of the first round player. Then you have the edge at 45, a linebacker at 76, corner safety. So this is a very heavy early defensive draft for Eric. Five straight defensive players. Then you have four straight offensive players. So it's kind of defense, offense, then defense, then offense. So that it's a nice switch up. But right now it's arguable, and I think it's true, that the, the position that needs more attention in the draft or the, the side of the ball that needs more attention in the draft for the Ravens is corner, right? It's defense and then corner, inside linebacker, defensive line, edge. So if you look at what side of the football needs more attention – it makes sense that Eric took five defensive players first. So I like the players too. I think that there are a lot of solid prospects here. Plus he's addressing the side of the ball that needs addressing so far. Next here, let's look at a mock draft from Harlan Mumphrey. Hmm, that's, that name sounds familiar. And he says more of an offensive centric draft. I couldn't pass on Carl at 14 or Leal at 45. And then Goodrich and Bryant both have the ability to develop into starting corners in this league. In my opinion, Robinson Jr. has Ravens running back Britain all over him. Sanborn would make for a good duo with PQ. So, George Karloftis, the edge is number 14. To Marvin Leal, interior defensive lineman, 45. Mario Goodrich, corner at 76. Cordo Volson, offensive tackle, 100. Brian Robinson Jr., running back at 110. Chicken Conquo, tight end at 119. Jack Sanborn, linebacker at 128. Tyrese Robinson, uh, interior offensive lineman at 139. Kobe Bryant, corner 141. And Tariq Carpenter, safety at 196. So, yeah. Karloff, this for me, he's a player I I don't see the Ravens taking it for. Like maybe they do, but personally, I would trade down for a player like Karloff. This I don't I don't hate him as a player. I just think that with what could be available, the Ravens would probably have better options there. But I don't I don't hate him as a prospect. I just think I would I would trade down in that scenario for me. Leal is somebody who I'd take right here. I'd trade up for Demarvin Leal if he's available at like forty. He, he's a player that has kind of had a stock fall a little bit, but I think is still a very solid player. And the edge interior defensive line duo would shore up the front seven for a very long time. Goodrich, I like as a corner prospect in the mid rounds. I like this pick a lot. Then you have just solid depth pieces. You have Volson as an offensive tackle, a third running back in Robinson Jr. A Conquell is a third tight end. Sanborn is someone next to Patrick Queen. Robinson is an offensive line depth guy. Brian is a corner, so two corners and a safety and three carpenter. I don't know if it, I don't know if the Ravens are going to take a safety because they already have guys like Geno Stone or Darius Washington, Brandon Stevens, etc. So maybe they draft they sign a guy and draft the free agency. But for right now, I don't necessarily see them taking a safety. But overall, I, I like the draft. Carlaptis is my favorite prospect, admittedly, but I think I like the Leal pick. I like the Goodrich pick, and then the depth in it is also really really good. And let's look at a mock draft here now from Akai, who has the Ravens taking Devontae Wyatt the defensive lineman from Georgia at 14. Then we have a trade. The Ravens get pick 37 and 80 for 45 and 76. And at 37, Roger McCreary, the corner from Auburn, is a selection. Luke Fortner, center from Kentucky, is the pick at 80. Luke Odecki's tackle from Central Michigan is at 100. Christian Watson, wide receiver from North Dakota State, is at 110. Diane McCollum, Sam Houston, is at 119. The corner to Marco Jackson, Appalachian State linebacker, 128. Jelani Woods, Virginia tight end at 139. Hassan Haskins is the pick at 196, uh, the running back there from Michigan. And then there was another trade. The Ravens end up trading round, or they get around five in 2023 and around seven in 2023 for their 141. So that's why there was no 141 in there. I like the trade up. I like the trade up because really what, what this is, is actually the Ravens are moving up in the second round, eight spots and only moving back in the third round, four spots to get that pick. So like if there's a player they like and they can, move up eight spots and only give up four spots in the third round. Oh um, yeah, for sure. Devontae Wyatt's had his stock rise in the cup in the last couple months here. I think he's a great player and the Ravens. I think that's a underrated option for them at 14. I know people are starting to come around on him as a prospect there for the Ravens. And I think that's a sneaky need for them. I know Jordan Davis is after his combine, the more popular option, but I still think that that Wyatt's a good player. McCreary, we talked about Luke Fortner. He's interesting. I like him. Maybe for me right now, he's very early day three instead of late day two. But if the Ravens like him enough, they could take him. Christian Watson, one of those big body receivers we were talking about where Justin Ross was my guy there. Another corner was Zion McCollum, who a lot of people like out of Sam Houston. Then you have the linebacker, tight end, and running back. So needs-based. There are no pure edge players here, though, which is the one surprising thing to me, in my opinion. So I'd probably take an edge here 
instead of maybe uh, ah, well tackle is important maybe instead of a linebacker but then that depends on if the Ravens sign anybody or maybe a tight end and the Ravens sign a veteran but I, I feel like they need some edge depth but at the same time they're getting good prospects here so <laughs> maybe it would work out they would just have to sign a couple edge guys in free agency in this scenario but that's all i have for you today here on lockdown ravens thank you so much for tuning in let me get back here tomorrow we'll be diving into more ravens talk so stay tuned for that and i'll see you tomorrow